Okay, so today we're doing the first derivative test. Just as a heads up to you, our quiz is Friday. I didn't know today was or tomorrow was going to be a normal flex day. Yes. I didn't know that. I figured they would have. I could have just looked on the site, but I didn't. But anyway, so I decided we're going to throw the te the quiz for the week on Friday. Um, so tomorrow let's do another lesson. Um, but yeah, so that's about it. Anyway. So today is the first derivative test. Um, so in section 5.1, we learned how to find where the relative extrema are located. They're located at the critical values. That's where f prime is zero or undefined, right? We learned that's where the relative extrema are. But what we never really did was we never really found out, well, is it a relative max or is it a relative min? Now, some of you are thinking, really? I thought we did that. I think you might be thinking of this. In 5.2, we learned the candidates test. The candidates test does not tell you if those ex relative extrema are maxes or mins. They just tell you if they are absolute maxes or mins. Okay? So, we learned in 5.2 how to find the absolute max and min. But today's lesson is going to be the first derivative test which helps you not just know where the relative extreme are located, but whether it's a relative max or it's a relative min. So that, that's what the first derivative test is all about. It's about determining, is that critical value a relative max or is it a relative min, or maybe neither. So you do this by looking at the slopes. So to begin, let's go ahead and review some basic slope stuff here. Um, what would you guys say about this slope over here. It's negative, right? So f prime of x, the derivative, would be less than zero over there, right? Because the line or the graph is decreasing. What about over here? That's increasing, right? So we would say for this side that f prime of x is greater than zero because the graph is increasing. Um, down here in the bottom we would say that f prime is zero because it's constant. So just reviewing some basic slope facts would be there, right? So this is the slide that you guys have. Now, here, here's basically the first derivative test in a nutshell. If your slope goes from a negative slope to a positive slope, then the critical value in between where they meet would have to be a relative minimum, right? If you're going down and then up, then you just reached a bottom, correct? And if you go from a positive slope to a negative slope, then that critical value is a relative max. So that's how you can tell. So, like I said, back in 5.1, we learned how to tell where the critical values were, but we really couldn't tell if those were relative maxes or relative mins. We are going to do it today. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the slope to the left and the slope to the right and see is it going from positive to negative or negative to positive, and that's going to give us a hint as to whether it's a max or a min. It is possible that you have this situation where it goes from positive to zero to positive, that's neither a max or a min, and you can see that on the graph, that's not a max or a min. Same thing over here, it goes from negative to zero to negative. So whenever the f prime does not change signs at that particular critical value, then it's not a relative extreme. Okay? All right. So I got the steps here, but basically in a nutshell, here they are. Find the critical values, look at the slope to the left and right, and then you can tell if it's a max and a min or not. Okay, so we'll go through those steps in a minute, but I want to make sure you guys are comparing and contrasting the candidates test with the first derivative test in your head. Um, so let's do a quick little Venn diagram. Okay, here's, here's the biggest difference right here. Um, well, let's start with a similarity, actually. They're, all, they're both about finding extrema. Uh, 
That's one thing that they have in common. Both of these tests are used to locate extrema on the graph. The big difference is this, is that the candidates test helps you find the global extrema. The absolute extrema, the, the absolute highest and absolute lowest point on the graph, whereas the first derivative test helps you find the relative extrema. So it only tells you if, where the relative extrema are at, not the globals. In other words, everywhere where the graph keeps turning around, right? <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. Shall we proceed? So make sure you know that now on Thursday, I'm going to share with you guys something called the second derivative test, the last test of the uh, extrema test that we're talking about here. Um, and it's actually the same thing as the first derivative test. It does the same thing. It's just that it's faster. Okay. The only reason why we learned the first derivative test to begin with is because the second derivative test doesn't always work. So um, we are going to learn another one, but it's just a shortcut for the first derivative test. All right. So did I print this one for you? No. All right. So let's go ahead and take a moment, write it down, and we'll do our first one. Our goal is to find where the relative min and relative max are. Uh, the steps in front of you there says find the critical values, right? That's the first thing that we want to do. Okay, so that's where we find where the derivative is equal to zero and where the derivative is undefined. Okay, so the derivative of that function up there is 2x plus 6, and we want to find out where that equals 0. So if we solve this out, we get x equals negative 3. So that's one of my critical values. That's where a max or a min could be located. Then we have to find where the derivative is undefined. So where is 2x plus 6 undefined at? Nowhere, right? So there are no points where it's undefined. So we don't get any. So we only have one critical value. All right, so now what we're going to do is, is we know where the critical value is in my member. That means that's either a relative min or a relative max. So I need to look at the slopes to the left and to the right of that point. Okay, if the slope goes from positive to negative, then that means it's a max. If it goes from negative to positive, that means it would be a min. Okay, so how we're going to do this is we're going to move on to step uh, two, and we're going to create some test intervals. So how that's going to look is we're going to make a number line. We're going to put our critical value on the number line. And since there's nothing over here, we'll just put infinity on the right and left. And what we have then is two intervals. We have from negative infinity up to <coughs> negative 3 is one interval. And then we have from negative 3 to infinity as my other interval. Okay. So... Let's go ahead and find out what f prime of what the derivative is or the slope is in each interval. So what we have to do is pick a test point. So a point in this interval would be like what? Sure. Let's do negative 4. And a test point over here? 0? Sure. So let's do that. Now this is pretty easy just to do mentally. What is, what is 2x plus 6, that's my derivative. If I plug in negative 4, what do I get? Positive 2? Negative 2. How about here? So is this a negative slope or a positive slope on this one? Negative. What that means is that on this entire interval from negative infinity down to negative 3, I've got a negative slope that's going down. Okay? And on this interval from 3 all the way up to infinity, 
It's a positive slope, so it's going up. So that means negative 3 gives me what kind of a relative extrema? It's a minimum. So f of negative 3 is a relative minimum. Now remember, relative it's uh, That's a good question. So the mins and maxes are what kind of values? Y values. So what is it? F or F prime? F. And we, so at this point, the last step is, now you're going to plug it into the original function. So this one's a little bit hairier than the candidates test because you do plug it into the derivative and the, the original. Candidates test, you just plug it into the original. All right, so f of negative 3, so we're going to plug that in up here. And what would that be? How much? Really? It doesn't sound familiar from last class. Let's see. Negative 3 squared would be 9. nine. Minus 18 would be negative 9. It's going to be 1. Uh -huh. One is a relative minimum. I think uh, one of those is a plural, and I don't know which. <coughs> Maybe. <laughs> Makes sense. Good, good reasoning. That's why I'm abbreviating men. <laughs> All right. So there, there's the whole process, you guys. Got it? So the first derivative test is all about looking at the slopes to the left and right of your critical values to know if they are mins or maxes. All right, so we'll do this one one at a time. Go ahead and find me the derivative. What's the derivative? It looks ugly, but it works out. x squared minus x minus 6, right? Okay, so where is it undefined? Nowhere, right? It's still a polynomial. But we do get to find out where it equals 0, so I'll pause here and let you guys find where it equals 0. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is old school style, factoring, right? The other way is we learn how in our calculator how to find when a function equals a certain number, right? So you could do that too. Both strategies will work. Roberto, Jacob, what'd you get? Jacob. Oh, okay. I thought you just didn't hear me. I'll pause a little more. You do the honors of picking our, our test points. What do you want to do for this first one? Negative 3 works. How about the next one? Sure. And then 5. Okay, now you guys could plug this in over and over again. It's really not that hard. But I want to show you guys a cool calculator trick. Because sometimes you end up with these functions that are really a big pain in the butt, and to plug them in over and over again can be really kind of irritating. So I'm going to show you guys how to let your calculator do a lot of this work for you. It's especially helpful if you have a whole lot of... Um, a whole lot of numbers to plug in. Like we have three, that's not a whole lot, but it's, you know. So here we're going to go and clear your screen. And what we're going to start off by doing is we're going to, I want to plug into the derivative, right? 
So I'm going to type in my derivative function. So, well, you know what, before I do that, let's, let's put the number in that we want. I, I'm going to plug in negative 3, okay? So I want to store that. Remember how to do it? You do negative 3, store, x, enter, right? So now x is negative 3. Now I'm going to type in my function x squared minus x minus 6, and then enter. So there's the answer. It's a 6. A so is that a positive or a negative? It's a positive, right? So that means my slope is going up on that interval. Now this is where life gets a little bit easier. What do I want to plug in next? 1. So I'm going to push 1, store, x, enter. Now check this out. I don't have to type this function in again. And once again, it's not this hard because it's not a really hard function, but some are. Like it takes like a minute sometimes to type some of these in just right. Okay. So for this one, and so I don't have to retype this. Here's what you can do. Push second and then push enter. Now what that does is it brings up the last thing you typed in. But I don't want the last thing I typed in. I want the thing before it. So do it again. Second, enter and it retypes the function for you so you don't have to type it all over again. So push second, enter. I don't know how far behind you are. Did you get the stored one yet? No? Oh, okay. Maybe next round. All right, go ahead and push enter and, and you got your answer. It's a negative six. Yeah, because if you're, if you're not there yet, you'd have to start from the beginning with it, right? Um, we'll, we'll get it. We'll do another one like it later. I'm going to do a few of them. Oh, so bad. Am I? Yeah. How about you guys? Oh. Try, uh, try the last one, you guys. I'll, I'll give you, try the calculator. Remember, you push, first of all, you want to store your value. Right? And then push second, enter until you bring your function back. Did you already type that function in once? The x squared minus x minus 6. OK. So what, for those of you guys that got that, what, what are you getting for f prime 5? So that's a positive, right? OK. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to determine what my relative min and max are, okay? So from here, you guys are going to figure out, is it a min, is it a max, and what is it? Like the value, the number, okay? I'll pause for a little bit. All right. Now, this is one where, you know, I mean, if you want to do it by hand, you can. But having this function, we're plugging into the original, right? So you're probably going to want to just type this into your calculator. But before we start going there, I'm going to ask some questions. Tau, f of negative 2, what would that be? Um, a max or a min? A max. A max, because it goes from positive to negative. So that would be a max. And then how about this one, Tau? A min. Because it goes from uh, downwards to upwards, right? So we have a max and a min here, and there, we should probably be specific and say, bless you, relative min and max. So now we're plugging them in, but this time we're plugging them into the original, right? So um, this is a great opportunity to use the calculator so that we don't got to make any mistakes. One of the things you got to make sure you put those fractions in parentheses. So one third is in parentheses x to the power of 3 minus parentheses 1 half x squared minus 6x plus 8. Now, this isn't anything. I, I haven't stored my x value yet. It's still using my old x value that I plugged in, but I have the function entered. Yeah. Oh, is it? So check this out. I can fix that using the same trick. So watch. Second entry. 
Now that I've re-entered it, I can go back up and I can just replace that with a division instead of having to type it all over again. So it's a nice little trick to know. So you don't got to keep doing it over and over again. But anyway, now I want to store my values. What value do I want to store? Negative 2, store x. So I've stored it. Now we're going to bring up the function. Second, enter, second, enter, enter. So I get 15.3. I'll pause and I'll give you a second to see if you can figure out what the last one is. So we did it there from beginning to end um, together. Now I want you guys to do one from beginning to end on your own. Derivative first. All right. Set it equal to zero. I don't need to find where it's undefined because it's never undefined. It's a linear function. We get three halves there. There's only one critical value. So that means we have two intervals from negative infinity to 3 halves, and then from 3 halves to positive infinity. Test points, good easy ones would be 0 and 2 maybe. So if you plug 0 into the derivative, you're going to get negative 15, so that's negative. If you plug 2 into the derivative, that's going to be 20, take away 15 is a positive 5, which means it goes down and then back up, which means this is a minimum value located at f of 1.5, which is 3 halves in case you didn't know. Um, and that is 11.25. And I was telling Jacob, although he wasn't interested, you could, <laughs> you could graph the function, right? And just look. Does that look like a relative minimum on the graph, you know? Um, so there you have it. That's the basic idea. Now, to, today I'm going to do more, and we're going to practice some more problems. And tomorrow we're going to pretty much be doing the same thing. Um, slightly different concept idea, but none of the math is different. Um, and the only reason why I decided to drag it out a little bit is because really the old stuff, the algebra, derivatives, stuff that maybe you've forgotten. Polynomials are easy. I always start with those. Um, but we start looking at other functions, it gets harder because we have to remember a lot of stuff. So. For the rest of the day, we're just going to work our way through, through some other challenging types of problems. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with your favorite. What is it? Trig, it's the new fraction. <laughs> the new and improved fraction is all you would see. I would take a fraction any day. I know. In self calculus, it's fraction that causes the moans, but in calculus, it's trig that causes the moans, and we all yearn for the days of fractions to return. All right. So let's begin. Uh, step one is the derivative. And I think we'll just kind of walk through these together. If you don't know, you can just say, I don't know. It's okay. But I'm going to start off with Jackie. First thing I do is find my critical point, so I need my derivative. So what's the derivative of this thing? Good. All right. Next. We're going to set this thing equal to 0, right? All right, Wendy, what would you do if you saw this question on the test? What would be the first thing that you would do? <laughs> Close. I would add, so here's what I would do. I, so I think most people would probably say minus the half, but that's going to make two steps. I would add, but I think I would add this guy over. That way we don't end up with a negative we have to get rid of. But you could, either way, the point is, is you want to get them on opposite sides, right? All right. Now we get to do our unit circle. Now, I won't call on someone specific for this, but I'll, I'll just ask. What is 
You know? Just off the top of your head like that? Or have you been working ahead again? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say, if you can know that right off the top of your head, that's pretty cool. But you can tell us, what. where does cosine of x equal a half at? That's true, but now, th thank you for answering that. She's right, negative pi over 3 is true. However, they gave us an interval. Now, they did that because with trig functions, you know they wiggle, right? So they really have an infinite number of relative mins and maxes, so they have to bracket us into a certain region. So we can't say negative pi over 3. What That, that would be if we went backwards. What if we went this way? What would the pi over 3 be called? Negative pi. Getting close. I, I don't know what you just said. That's no, it's no, that's five pi over three. Were you just about to say it? It is five pi over three. So there it is. It's not going to go away, and you will see this on your exam, guys. All right. Okay. Test intervals now. <laughs> I am going to ask Kirsten. What's going to go here? Usually, right? But this time. Yes, because it's bracketed, right? So it's really not a big deal. It, it, it'll be a big deal tomorrow. For our purposes today, it wouldn't matter. But for tomorrow, that, that would be important. Um, actually, it's pretty much the same thing. You'll, you'll see when we get there. Where it's almost. I'm just changing the question, but all the math is the same. All right, Francisco, how are you with your trig? Can you tell me a, a, a nice radian that exists between pi over 3 and 0? I agree. Pi over 6 does exist there. You just got to see that unit circle in your head. Bro, I never learned that unit circle. Joanna, <laughs> give me a radian between pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Um. Sure. <laughs> and just so you guys know, life, since we're if we're using calculators, it really doesn't matter what you pick so long as between those. So if you have a calculator, you can really just do what's pi divided by 3, change it into a decimal, do the same thing here, and then just pick a number between those decimals. You could do that. Um, oh. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're doing it by hand, you're going to need actual unit circle values to plug in, so you want to know how to do it this way. Now, we're not. I'm still going to use a calculator just for the sake of time, but I'm just showing you guys how we can do it. So, Jonathan, give me something between 5 pi over 3 and 2 pi. That would work, but that's not actually in the unit circle. Um, 11 pi over 6. Good. I, I think you were seeing the right thing. Just forgot what the number was. So there it is. Um, now we get to figure out what the derivative is at each one of these. So we plug it into the derivative, OK? Um, yeah. All right, so go ahead and plug them in. Why don't you guys here in these two rows, you guys plug in pi over 6 for me to the derivative. Here. Yeah. You look like you're upset. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, do you guys here plug in pi, please? And then you guys here are going to do 11 pi over 6 to the derivative, right? And I don't care what the number is. I just want to know if it comes out positive or negative, just so you know. So we have down, up, down. So f of pi over 3 is a min. And f of, I don't like where I'm putting that. f of 5 pi over 3 is a max. So um, you guys mind if we just kind of skip plugging them in to the original? We'll just do this. Um, You know. 
if you're doing it just out of laziness, but you really know how to do it, I'm okay with that. But if you actually need to practice, I always practice. Um, so there's that. Now there's another one I wanted to get to today. Um, I'm going to try to fly through it because I want you guys to see it. Do you want me to just do it on the video and you guys watch it from home? Let me let me show you what it is first of all. It's it's rational expressions. Okay, the derivative is a little bit trickier, and finding the uh, finding the critical points is a little bit interesting. That was on the homework. Yeah. Do you want me to do it now or do it on the video? Now, okay, so I'll work, and if I don't finish, I'll just pause it, and then I'll finish it, and you guys can watch it. All right, so here we go. So the derivative. First of all, how do you find the derivative? Low di high minus high di low. Draw a line and square below. So low d high. That's supposed to be a three minus high. Okay. Okay. I ran out of space. I gotta start over. Please. All right. Low d high minus high d low. I'm gonna put it up in the front here. Two x. Draw a line. Square below. Now, when we were in unit one, that's where we stopped. So we weren't going to do anything with it. But now we actually need to simplify this if we're going to find our critical values. So here we go. F prime of x, if I simplify it, becomes 4x to the fifth minus 2x to the fifth minus 2x, which simplifies even more into 2x to the fifth minus 2x over x to the fourth. Now, here's where the big aha comes from. You guys know how we want to find our critical? I can wait. Okay. So you know how we want to find our critical values? When the top of a fraction is 0, what is it? 0. When the bottom of a fraction is zero, what is it? Undivine. Those are where your two critical values are. So this one is what we're going to use to find where f prime of x equals zero. This one is where we're going to find where f prime of x is undefined. And those just so happen to be the two places where critical values are located that we need. So here we go. After that, it's all pretty much the same, except I do remember that on this problem, we do get one critical value. Well, yeah, the top though, right? I factored out a 2x. Yeah. That's for the undefined one. Yeah, so that's the trick, is that to find the critical values, you set the top equal to 0 for where the function equals 0, set the bottom equal to 0 for where it's undefined, which are both things that we need to do. Um, That's a difference of squares, right? And then there's another difference of squares. Oh, stop it. Not that bad. <laughs> this did difference of squares, and that's a difference of squares. All this whispering of disapproval. I'm not whispering. I don't like now, I'm not going to set this one equal to 0, although you could. I'll talk about it afterwards. But it's not going to give you a real answer. That, that can't equal 0. Okay, So I get x equals 0. That's one critical value. x equals 1. And x equals negative 1. 
So I've got three critical values. This one, if you try to solve it, you're going to get x is equal to the square root of negative 1. You guys see that? No, that, that's, that does not give us a critical value. You can't have imaginaries. And then up here, we have x equals what? So I've got my critical values there. Now, this is an example of one where it would be really nice to know how to plug it into your calculator, so you don't got to keep plugging in over and over and over again. So that's where that strategy would come in handy. I don't think you guys are going to get to see the end of it. I'll keep going. But I do know that one of these, like, one of these is not going to give us a relative min or a max. You'll see why, because when you get to the very, when you, yeah, when you get to the zero, it's going to look like maybe it's a relative max, but you try to plug it in, it's undefined, so it's actually nothing there. So I'll go ahead and finish it up. So I'm plugging in 0 0.5, negative 0.5, negative 2, and positive 2 into my slope formula here. What's up with you, Mr. Talon, sir? I don't know. I'm just thinking about doing calculus while I wait for practice to start. What time did you practice at? Uh, three fifteen. Can I still work again? Yes, you can. Um, it's on top of that chopping device up there on the cabinet. Um, just make sure you got the calculus one, not the pre-calculus one. The calculus one is calculator work. There's a couple of sheets there. They're still recording. I know. So. Let's do that and plug in my derivative. All right, my derivative was, well, let's store a value first, negative 2. Now we're going to put in our derivative. And i got to put it in parentheses, actually. It's all in the numerator. And then we have x to the fourth on the bottom. Enter. So that's a negative. We shall repeat with negative 0.5. Positive. Well, you're welcome to hang out in here if you want to. Yeah, I'm just working on slope theory. So it looks like the following, but I think we're in for a little bit of a surprise here. Um, f of negative 1 looks like a min. f of 0 looks like a max. And f of 1 looks like a min. But we're going to actually try to calculate these, and what we're going to find out is that um, I think one of these is not going to actually work. So. 
<clears throat> so now we're doing the regular function instead of the derivative. So um, we have to type in a new function. But first of all, let's do our storage value. So I want to plug in negative one. So stored negative one. Now I'm going to type in the original function. Parentheses x to the fourth power plus one divided by parentheses x squared equals two. That one's good. So we have a relative min at two. Now I'm going to do zero. Zero store x enter. Bring back our function x to the fourth. And that's undefined, and that's what we would expect because you can have zero in the bottom. So this is not a max. It looked like a max, but since zero is actually not defined at that point, you actually don't have a max. Let's take a look at f of one and see what that one comes out to be. So we basically have two relative minimums. They're the same thing. They're both at two. 